Okay guys, today we are talking about bullet caliber and what that is, what's millimeter, why are some millimeters, uh, what's the gauge of a shotgun, and by the end of this video, you should understand all of that. So pretty much to sum up how there has become to be so many different types of measuring bullets, pretty much a bunch of dudes got in a room, drank way too much alcohol, and then just started writing on the wall. Okay, not really, but essentially after this video, you'll pretty, you'll pretty much think that's what happened. So first, let's get in the caliber. So in my hand, I have three different calibers of bullet here. So this top one is a 45 caliber. The second one is a 40 caliber, and this one is like everybody knows, the 22, uh, 22 caliber. So caliber essentially equates to the diameter of the bullet in inches. So a 45 caliber is 0.45 inches, approximately. Um, for the 40 caliber, it's 0.4 inches. 22 caliber, 0.22 inches. Or a 50 caliber, which I don't have, unfortunately, maybe one day, is 0.5 inches. And that is the largest size of bullet that here in the United States a civilian can own. Now, if you don't live in a free state, then you can't even own that. Okay, so what about the nine millimeter? So, um, like there are miles and kilometers, the same thing, there are caliber, and then there's millimeters that follow the metric system. So we have a bunch of calibers like the 45 and the 50 and the 40 caliber. And then you have nine millimeter, which is measured in millimeters as opposed to inches. So to get an approximate conversion from a nine millimeter to, um, to caliber, you essentially multiply by four. That's not quite perfect, but it's, it's, a per, it's good enough to give you a, a rough estimate. So there's also 10 millimeter. So a 10 millimeter in diameter is very close to a 40 caliber bullet and then a nine millimeter, it would be approximately a 36 caliber bullet. Not quite, but close enough for government work. You'll see this chart and you'll, you may wonder why are there so dang many? And as you learn more and more about guns, you start to realize that each of these actually to some degree or another, do serve different purposes. So obviously you got your, your big boys down here, you got your 50 cal and that's the, you know, turn, uh, M1 Abrams tank, tanks in a Swiss cheese. And then you have your your little 223 guys over here uh, that are more for, for you know, military use. And then you have these big guys here, like your, your 4570 or your 45 Colt. And those are going to be more for uh, taking down elephants or whatever in Africa. Uh, and then you have your 9mm, which is somewhere on here that's good for... Um, uh, handguns. Um, some of these are going to be rifle rounds. They're going to have different ballistic coefficients and all that. And so essentially what companies do is every year or so, they'll be, they'll try to tweak a bullet and a caliber and well, the whole cartridge, essentially, not just the calibers. We got our cartridges over here. It's kind of dark um, just to make it slightly better to slice, to fly slightly better through the air. Um, and most of the time it just ends up sucking. Now, a new caliber that actually doesn't suck that is actually gotten pretty popular here is the 6.5 Creedmoor. It hasn't been around for very long, but it's a pretty fantastic caliber. So that's an example where Hornady innovated and they actually did a pretty darn good job. So... Um, there are some other ones like, uh, I don't know where, on, where it's on here, but like the 357 SIG, uh, between you and me and the fence post is the dumbest dang round ever. I've seen a couple of these, like there's nobody shoots this round. Um, it's going to get expensive to buy here in like a decade cause nobody will have them. Just stick with a freaking nine millimeter cause everybody and their dog shoots them. So you have to make decisions on also whether you can actually buy that round. And right now, if you have the weird rounds, they're almost impossible to find. So now you know that when you hear a different caliber or millimeters of a bullet, you'll be able to think in your head, oh, this is millimeters or this is caliber. So a 22, if it's a big number, odds are is it's a it's a caliber. So 22 is going to be 0.22 of inches. A 50 caliber is 0.5 inches. What about weird ones like a uh, 300 Win Mag? 300? What's that? So it's essentially 0.3 inches. So it's a 30 caliber round essentially. Or you have the 270, which is another very popular hunting round. And that one is 0.27 inches. Or the 6.5 Creedmoor that I mentioned, that's in millimeters, we're back to millimeters. Or obviously your nine millimeter, very popular round. Your 10 millimeter, eh, not as popular, but still pretty popular. Um, your 6.5 PRC, that's another uh, 6.5 millimeter round. 
Um, and it, you can also convert your millimeters back into uh, calibers, like I mentioned before, just multiplied by four. So um, 6.5 is going to be approximately like 26. Um, it's actually 0.264 to be exact. But again, like I said, it's, it's good enough for grammar work. Okay, so if you're not confused yet with caliber, I've got yet another surprise for you that makes things even more confusing. And this is why I refer the, the comment at the beginning where it's just a bunch of drunk dudes in a room figuring out what the heck caliber is. So now we get into shotgun shells, which are measured, guess what? In gauges. Now we're not even in the inches or millimeter realm. We're in a gauge. What the freak is a gauge, you ask? Well, a gauge is so that you have the, the bore diameter it's how many lead balls the size of the diameter of that bore that would add up to weigh a pound. Don't ask. I wasn't in charge of this. I would have just done millimeters from the get-go because I'm a big fan of metric because I'm an engineer. So, um, so for example, a 10 gauge, it would take 10 lead balls. It's the biggest shotgun that's, that's common. It would take 10 lead balls to weigh a pound. Or you have your 12 gauge round, which is this guy. So it would take 12 lead balls, the diameter of that, to weigh a pound. This is a 20 gauge, so it's going to take 20 lead balls that diameter to weigh a pound. Common gauges are 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 16 gauge, 20 gauge, 28 gauge. And then to make it even more confusing, what the freak is a 410 shotgun? So a 410 shotgun, uh, they decided to go back to inches, and it's uh, 410 thousandths of an inch, which, if you're curious, adds up to be approximately a 67 gauge shotgun. So, don't ask, it don't make any sense. I know, but I didn't make it. So now you know what a gauge is, you know what caliber is, and you know that some bullets are measured in millimeters, like 65 Premore or the uh, 9 millimeter. So hopefully all that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, please put your questions in the comments below and I can re brief ice this video and maybe make one that's a little bit more simple. Um, and as you go to the questions or comments, or if you can explain why the heck there are so many dang cartridges out there, um, put that in the comments below as well. Okay guys, thanks for watching.